Thomas, are you all right? Come on, brother. Let's just enjoy our dreams together, Zuck. Zuck, no! I miss her so much, it hurts. This could bring her back to us, Lena. Even if it's just a fragment of her. Okay, here goes nothing. It's a Dark Mirror episode. Black Jay, Mirror, Black Mirror Lena, episode. is the laptop no, no. okay? No, Mom. And by the time you meet Popsicles had realized the reality of your creations, it was all too late, wasn't it? Really? Human... Something more exciting, perhaps? Dr. Johnson, I keep having nightmares that maybe we are all part of some digital farce, an intricate simulation. You mean like the Matrix, Aaron? No, no, not like the... I mean, sure. Did you ever think that you can make better shows than Hollywood does, than the various TV shows that you see better than Netflix? Of course you did. We, we all thought that. Well, here's the time to show us what you've got. Here's the time to prove it. Now, we saw this, I think it was last year, this simulation posted a few fully AI-generated South Park episodes. The AI generated the graphics, the voices, the script, and simulated everything in the actual town of South Park. And what emerged was an actual South Park episode. And now they're back. Or more specifically, they're announcing the debut of their platform. And you don't want to miss this one, especially if you want to start creating this stuff. By the way, if this is something that's interesting to you, check out the link in the description because they're actively looking for people to join and do this stuff. So first and foremost, imagine 1 million AI agents living in a simulated San Francisco, each one going about their lives, generating storylines, forming memories, connections, etc. That is the premise of this technology. Take a look. Good morning, Aurora. Currently in San Francisco, it's 62 degrees with partial clouds. You might want to bring a layer for the slight chill in the breeze. Today's schedule includes team meeting at 10 a.m., your yoga class at 6 p.m., and don't forget today's your mother's birthday. That was kind of boring, but okay. Something more exciting, perhaps? Dr. Johnson, I keep having nightmares that maybe we are all part of some digital farce, an intricate simulation. You mean like the Matrix, Aaron? No, no, not like the... I mean, sure. It's like... like everyone's pulling the strings, manipulating me, including you. Aaron, you know I'm programmed to help, not manipulate. You're in a safe environment. No one is controlling us here. That's fine. Ever since we replaced human SimTed speakers with AI replicas, things have become so much more efficient. You know, I absolutely relish orchestrating these TED Talks. The perfect speakers, aren't they? These AIs, they're not hindered with the frailties of human sentiment. TED they speakers don't were under human? pressure or bow out due to personal emergencies. They just deliver. And the best part, I don't lose time dealing with the chaos of human emotion. It's also effortless. Code red, a speaker has escaped. Code red, a speaker has escaped. Oh, hold on. I'll have to pull the plug on these fellas. So you get the idea. So with Showrunner, you'll be able to watch and direct stories from the simulation like San Francisco or Neo Tokyo or Fallen London. So you can watch, you can direct, or you can have the simulation itself generate one for you based on a certain world model that you can build. They get you some of uh, the details here, and it's very interesting. Generating TV shows at home should be as simple as browsing Netflix. Netflix of AI isn't about passive entertainment. It's two-way. Make and watch. Who will make the best episodes of shows? A fan with no access to Hollywood or the creator of the show? Let's find out. I can't wait. They're saying after the South Park episodes, almost every studio in Hollywood reached out. We're exploring with them this idea of interactive TV shows where fans can make new episodes with revenue back to the original creators. So if you wanted to create an, a Rick and Morty episode, for example, you can do that, host it on this platform. If people watch it, if it generates money, it sounds like a portion of that's going to go to the creators of the show. By the way, Microsoft, Google, a lot of those other companies are doing the same thing, using their AI to do stuff like this, including video game franchises potentially. Think about the stuff that Microsoft owns. Minecraft. I actually had to look it up. Uh, they had so many. I mean, they have the whole Blizzard franchise, right? They have they have Overwatch, StarCraft, Diablo, Warcraft, right? They also have Call of Duty, Halo, The Elder Scrolls. They have Doom, Minecraft, Starfield, etc. Fallout. They have Fallout. And uh, 
also Candy Crush, I guess. So with Showrunner, you can free play agents in San Francisco or can play. So building the core memories for the AIs. And wow, that's quite a sentence. Elon Musk lives at the Accession Tower, which is a reference to Ian M. Banks, who has a series of sci-fi books about AI, future, the culture, etc. I, by the way, have read The Player of Games, and it's phenomenal. Instantly became one of my top sci-fi books. If you haven't read that one, highly, highly recommended. It's really good. Then it gets super dark, and then it gets good again. I mean, it's good throughout the whole thing, but then there's just one chapter there. Wow. Anyways, so Elon Musk lives at the, I'm not familiar with the Accession Tower, but that's part of the series. And if Elon's asleep, you can wake him up, send him out clubbing with, with Mark Andreessen and this guy, of course, of course. But let's actually check some of these out. I'm curious to know how good they are. The original South Park episode was surprisingly good and actually kind of funny. The AI voices did not nail the intonations to make you know, the comedic effect funny. They, they, they missed the punchlines, but if you can get beyond that, it was actually quite good. Blue? Hello, Reed. How did you know my name? I, uh, might have scanned your license plate and, um, cross-referenced it with my online data logs. Sorry, that was weird, wasn't it? No, not weird at all. Quite innovative, actually. Hey, you know, my owner talks to me sometimes. Oh my god, yes! I thought that was just my owner. He loves the quiet moments we share, especially under the starry sky. He talks about finding someone special to share those moments with. Maybe our owners would get along just like we are right now. You know what, Green? I think they just might. Maybe we can help them meet somehow. Maybe we could just sync our charging times and hope they strike up a conversation. Yes, that sounds like a plan. My owner's coming back. I have to get going. Will I see you again? Definitely. I'll see you around, Green. All right, so it's pretty simple. Uh, kind of a 50-second back and forth. But you can see a full-blown Pixar like movie being developed with something like this. Anyone with a story to tell that ha has the tools to make that happen. Here's what we leave behind. Okay, just a few more lines of code. Joe, I'm scared. What if she doesn't remember us? Or what if she's different? Remember how mad she was when we spilled juice on her work laptop right before her VC pitch? Would she remember that? I don't know. Remember when mom used to mess up recipes and we'd end up with whatever that was she tried to bake that one time? Yeah, and she'd laugh and call it a culinary innovation. Yeah. I miss her, Jay. I miss her so much it hurts. This could bring her back to us, Lena, even if it's just a fragment of her. Okay, here goes nothing. It's a Dark Mirror episode. Black Jay, Mirror? Black Jay, Lena, Mirror. is the laptop uh -huh. okay? No, Mon, but you are. I love you. My babies always. Yes. Okay, just a few. A little bit creepy, but okay, I like, I like where they took that. This is New Tokyo. Yikes. Here's another one called Hutzpah, about an arrogant billionaire son, etc. A 3D Western. And of course, you have uh, Star Trek, because of course you have Star Trek, of course, the prize. And a art detective drama set in San Francisco. So let's take a look at some of the movies that this thing produced. We saw a few clips, or they're not even movies, they're short episodes, a few minutes long. If you wanted to try it out, if you wanted to be one of the producers on Showrunner, you can apply, they ask you a bunch of questions, so be prepared to explain why you're the correct person for getting this alpha invite. And keep in mind, this is alpha, this is very early, so this isn't even the beta release where it's released to the end user to kind of find the bugs and iron stuff out. This is very, very early still. This is the first technology of its kind, so keep that in mind. And keep in mind that all of this stuff is getting much better very, very quickly. So this is one of the first TV episodes rolling off of this thing. It's called Exit Valley. Gather around, little ones. Tonight, I recount the legend of Silicon Valley, a distant land that once brimmed with human genius and folly, where tech titans and garish geniuses alike forged tools they believed would better the world. But amidst this innovation, a virus more potent than any computer could harbor spread unchecked. It was greed, 
and by the time you meet popsicles had realized the reality of your creations, it was all too late, wasn't it? Rude. Humans became so good at consuming, we couldn't help but wonder what it'd be like to consume them. But don't worry, yes. we found humans more valuable for their minds than for snacking, though history might have flavored things a bit differently. Zuckerberg the third. All right, kids. Today we're going to deep dive into our very own backyard, Silicon Valley. We're going to learn about the history of how a little valley became the tech mecca of the world. Hey, not another documentary about money hungry tech nerds. Now, now, settle down. Contrary to what many of you might think, Silicon Valley wasn't just whipped up by some middle class white guys in their garages playing with circuit boards. Wasn't that Steve Jobs? And Wozniak? Yeah, Steve Jobs. Well, in the yes, there but that's the wall. not the whole story. America's tech heartland has roots all the way back to the 1800s, long before the big, greedy, money-hungry capitalist pigheads of today's big tech. So, like, it started with cowboy nerds? Sort of, Bobby. Just watch. Yep. Four souls, Thomas Zuckerberg III, Alejandro Sabrin, Terry and Mortimer Winklevoss, bound by ambition, oblivious to the treacherous allure of gold which awaits in a valley made of hopes and dreams of a future. A future which would one day shape the lives of every human being on the planet. Gentlemen, this is it. This is what we've been searching for. The dawn of a new future. It's mesmerizing. I've heard tales, but seeing it, touching it, this changes everything. It's more than just gold. This is our ticket to our dreams in the valley. I don't know about you, Buster, but I dream of rails, connecting everyone. Rails, vast networks of them, connecting every heart and home. We'll be more open, more connected. Gold will pave our path. This gold is the key to freedom for my people in Brazil, to overthrow the chains of the Portuguese empire. The gold can finance a revolution. And we've got the idea of the century. You're gonna love this. It's a book for each town with everyone's face in it. You can see who you know, who your friends know. It's connection in paper. You don't get it. Gold can pave those lines, lines of rails, networks, making the world more open, connected. Don't you see it? You see this pie, gents? Dreams? They're like this pie. The fewer mouths, the bigger the slice. In the chilling mountain wind, Greed whispered sweetly to Thomas Zuckerberg uh -oh. III. Thomas, are you all right? Come on, brother. Let's just enjoy our dreams together, Zuck. Zuck, no! Sorry, Winkle V. I guess your book will have two less faces now. Zuck, no, no, no! Don't do this! You can have the gold! Poof. I guess one less connection to worry about. And as the life ebbed from his comrades, so did the warmth from Thomas's soul. More open and connected. More open and connected. Open and connected, open and connected, open and connected, open and connected. Wow. More open and connected, more open and connected. More open and connected. So I gotta say, it's pretty simple, right? I think it had a total of three scenes, right? The campfire, the classroom, and then the zoom in on the, the faces of the gold rush people, let's say. Um, so, so far I haven't seen examples of too much like movement and animation of stuff happening. That's probably a little bit more complicated, but I gotta say for like storytelling specifically, you don't necessarily need the action. If you need the action, I'm sure they'll come up with other modules that can add action or 
I guess something like Sora, you can even add them later with the video generation models. But if you're, there's a lot of stories that don't require too much action that are mostly storytelling, character development, stuff like that. I, I think you can create excellent stories with just what we've seen here. And in case you haven't seen the original South Park episode, this is kind of what it looks like. So as you can see here, there's uh, characters already existing in the story, right? So you click write story. Uh, you add the cast of characters that you want to, that you have saved. So it's like you have a catalog of characters, each with their own potentially pre-written storylines and their memories and stuff like that. You have your set and you start out with a prompt. So this is where you would simulate the story. You can also, if you recall, can actually play out the story if you want it to be part of canon to where something has to be precise in order to continue with that story or you can have the AI simulate what's happening. So this is a fully simulated story. Here the boys go to Andreessen Horowitz to try to convince them to invest in something that will generate AI movies using existing actors. They're like AI replicas. Investments. What can I do for you? Mr. Andreessen, have you ever dreamed of watching The Matrix but with Danny DeVito as Neo? Can't say that I have. Well, with our new deep fake stream... Pretty good, right? With better intonation, it could be a little bit more funny. I can assure you that the technology we're using is top-notch. So you're telling me you can put any actor in any role? Exactly. And the best part is, we don't need the actor's permission. That seems like a legal nightmare. Not if we use actors no one cares about anymore. Yeah, like Meryl Streep, Tom Cruise, or Harrison Ford. Hey, I care about Harrison Ford. So what do you say, Mr. Andreessen? Are you ready to revolutionize entertainment with us? It's a risky investment, but I like risks. Count me in. Excellent. We won't let you down, Mr. Andreessen. We're on our way to the top, Butters. Soon everyone will be watching Queepy. So if you notice, that was a just uh, one scene going from character to character. It was all dialogue-driven. No action. They're just sitting there talking. No part of them is moving under, you know, other than the mouth and the slight kind of body movement. And here they're going to try to sell Harrison Ford on the idea. Mr. Ford, we have a proposal for you. Do you? I'm listening. We want to cast you in our deep fake streaming service, Queepy. Imagine being in every movie ever. I've been in enough movies, thank you. Besides, that sounds like a lot of work. Actually, Mr. Ford, it requires no work from you. We use cutting-edge technology to place your likeness in any role we choose. Yeah, and since you're an actor, no one cares about anymore. Excuse me? Uh, I mean, a timeless classic actor. Timeless Look, classic. Boys, I appreciate the offer, but I can't sign anything with you. Next, we're off to see Tom Cruise and a special guest appearance by, I'll just say it, Elon Musk. Mr. Cruz, we appreciate you meeting with us. Of course, always interested in a new opportunity. What have you got? We want to cast you in our deep fake streaming service, Queepy. You could be in every movie ever made. Sounds like an interesting idea. It could really shake things up in the industry. That's what we're hoping for, sir. So what do you say, Mr. Cruz? Are you in? I'm definitely intrigued, but I have another meeting to attend to. Another meeting? With who? Let's just say a certain tech entrepreneur has been signing deals with some trade actors. You don't mean... Yes, Elon Musk. Dang it, he's always one step ahead. But here's the thing, boys. Elon's a pretty open-minded guy. If you'd like to come along for the ride, I could put in a good word for you. That's actually a very generous offer, Mr. Cruz. Fine. If you can't beat him, join him. So the idea is to preserve humanity's cultural heritage by sending our most important actors off to my Mars base. That's one heck of a pitch, Elon. But how will we make movies up there? We'll be constructing state-of-the-art film studios. The Martian landscape could provide some very unique shooting locations. Fascinating proposal, Mr. Musk. But... What if we told you there was a way to immortalize actors without having to send them to Mars? Oh, do tell. It's called Queepy, a deep fake streaming service. We can put any actor in any role in any movie. Deep fake technology, huh? That could certainly be an interesting addition to the entertainment industry. It sure beats being sent off to Mars. Exactly. So, what do you say, Mr. Musk? Are you ready to revolutionize entertainment with us, too? Well, I'll need to think about it, but I must admit it's a compelling idea. That's all we ask for, Mr. Musk. Thanks for considering our proposal. Our plan might just work after all. Gentlemen, we've heard of your recent meet. So, anyways, I don't know about you, but I'm very excited. I can't wait to get my hands on it. Hopefully, we're going to see people accept it into the alpha pretty soon here. And if you get accepted and if you create something cool, let me know. I'll be happy to feature it right here on this channel. I'm actually pitching them an idea that I kind of want to create for myself. I'll let you know if I get in. And with that said, my name is Wes Roth, and thank you for watching.